Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily update for June 7th, 2021. Today I want to talk to you about the situation in Syria, as there's been a, a series of, of very significant reports from journalist Aaron Maté of the Gray Zone, uh, the webcast uh, or the blog of Pushback, but he's been in Syria and he's been interviewed on a number of programs which you can find on YouTube where he has been laying out very clearly what he saw and what he learned on his recent trip to Syria. Now, this is important because the U.S. is still involved in Syria. The mistakes that were made at the beginning of this period of the unending wars back after the 9-11 attack uh, continues. But importantly, what Mate is referring back to is the role the United States played and continues to play in supporting through arming, through training, through other forms of backing of the Islamic terrorists who conducted a brutal civil war. And that civil war was finally ended by the forces of the Syrian army, backed by the Russians, backed to some extent by Iran. But that civil war was won but instead of working to reconstruct Syria, the United States imposed something called the Caesar sanctions. These were initiated by then Secretary of State Pompeo. They're being continued by the Biden administration, backed by Tony Blinken, who calls them humanitarian sanctions. These are sanctions that are threatening the lives of millions of Syrians by cutting off medicine, by cutting off food, by keeping U.S. troops in, the, in a section of the country, controlling one-third of the country, where the wheat is produced and where oil is produced, where the oil and food production of Syria is being stolen. Now, the, keep in mind, who defended the Syrian government or the Syrian people? It was the Syrian government of Assad, backed by the Russians and Iran. And who were they fighting? the Al-Qaeda al-Nusra jihadists who had their support coming from the United States and our NATO allies, including Turkey. Uh, also support from the Saudis, from the Emirates, and from Israel. So you had a coalition of powerful nations trying to impose a regime change on the people of Syria. And the people of Syria won. And so in response to that, these sanctions have been initiated. Colonel Richard Black, the former head of the U.S. Military Criminal Law Division at the Pentagon, has reported on our stations, on, on the Schiller Institute events, on how disgusted he is by what he said is a human rights violation, that, that this is illegal warfare. Uh, war crimes being conducted against the whole population. So the, the fact that this is now being exposed in the way that it is by Aaron Mate, who's a progressive who has been reporting and debunking Russiagate for the last few years. What's interesting is when you look at this, what are we seeing? The same people who, the same networks that ran Russiagate ran the regime change operation in Libya. Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, that destroyed that nation. They carried out the coup in Ukraine, which put us on a razor's edge toward war recently with Russia because of the demands of the Ukrainians that the, there be a war against, that they be backed in, in their war against Russia. And now we see in Syria, as in Iraq, the destruction of the means of existence of a population. So it's crucial that the American people reflect on what our government continues to do. Now, President Trump said he was going to end these never-ending wars, but he didn't. He wasn't able to because the military-industrial complex was too strong, including in his own Republican Party. The Republican Party is a party of war hawks, typified by Marco Rubio, typified by uh, Hawley and, and others who are now saying we have to stand strong against Russia and China. 
but the Democratic Party as well. It's a bipartisan grouping committed to war, committed to sanctions which kill. And this same grouping is supporting the Biden policy to challenge Russia and China. The Republicans say, well, Biden's not tough enough on China and Russia. What do you want to do, launch nuclear war? Because that's where we're headed if this isn't stopped. So it's, it's important to realize then that what is the U.S. doing? We have become, on a British agenda, the world's imperial power, stealing resources. Part of the Caesar sanctions will put sanctions on any company that goes in to try to help Syria rebuild. That goes against the history of the U.S. after World War II. What did we do then? We helped Germany and Japan rebuild as part of an overall reconstruction process. And Franklin Roosevelt intended as well to help the Soviet Union rebuild as a way of ending the potential for what became the Cold War. And now today's cold warriors are urging that we take on the so-called malign intent of Russia and China by containing them with military expenditures going through the roof, by bringing other countries into an alliance against them. This is an American imperial policy, which is not really American, it's British. And the true enemies of the United States are the ones domestic and foreign who are supporting this approach to attacking Russia and attacking China. Now, Putin had a very interesting observation on this at the sidelines of the St. Petersburg Economic Forum. He said the problem with empires is that they think that they are so powerful that they can afford small inaccuracies and mistakes. That is, if, if you would assume these endless wars are inaccuracies and mistakes, but he went on to say, problems keep piling up, and at some point, they are no longer able to cope with them. And the United States is now walking the Soviet Union's path, and its gait is confident and steady. And Putin said he's saying this as a former citizen of the Soviet Union. So this is a, a compelling warning as we head into a period where starting in the next few days, There'll be a G7 summit where Biden is going to pull together a, an alliance of democracies, of democratic states, to do what? To contain and contest Russia and China. The NATO summit will follow that, where the head of NATO, Stoltenberg, is saying that we must be prepared to take action against Russia and China. And then there'll be the Biden-Putin summit on June 16th, which hopefully will be elevated above this kind of juvenile war talk. Now, one final note. Yesterday was the 77th anniversary of D-Day, June 6th, 1944, where large numbers of Americans risked their lives to cross the English Channel to begin the process of liberating Europe from the Nazi uh, control. And in that, who was the main ally of the United States? What nation suffered more losses than any other nation? It was the Soviet Union. So 77 years ago, my father and the father of many people my age, the fathers of many people my age, risked their lives in that endeavor at D-Day on the beaches of Normandy and in the follow-up with the uh, launching of the war in, in southern Italy and then going across Europe. We should keep that in mind with these summits coming up, that we had allies at the time who stood with us against fascism. But today, the policies coming from London and Washington are much closer to those of Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan than they are to the policies that the Americans supported in helping to win World War II. So thank you for joining me today. I'll be back tomorrow. Remember June 26th and 27th, the Schiller Institute will be sponsoring our next conference to take up these kinds of compelling questions. So I'll join you again tomorrow.